Okay, it's 5 p.m., 5 o'clock rock. I'm Jay Fidel on ThinkTech, and guess what? We're doing ThinkTech Tech Talks today, and uh, we're doing that with Kevin Miyashiro. Uh, he is one of the principals, the co-chair of the IMS 2017 uh, conference, and we're, uh, that's the uh, International Microwave uh, Symposium. You got it right in the first try, Jay. Yeah, well, <laughs> symposium throws you off a little bit, you know. You know these engineers. <laughs> we like big, fancy acronyms, yes. <laughs> and we're going to call this show IMS 2017 Men's Business Technical Tourism. I love that term. That's Kevin's term. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So here we are, and it's, what is it, June 2nd today. And it's the rest of, the rest of our lives, you know, the rest of the world goes forward from here. But what I want to know is how you got here. Don't tell me taxi cab. <laughs> <laughs> I drove. Uh, how did you, what did you do in your life to deposit yourself here in this place at this time? So I, I give a lot of credit to my dad. You know, as a kid, I, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Uh, apparently, he made a decision for my, my sister and me before we were even born. You, you guys are going to be engineers or technologists of some kind. <laughs> I have so decreed. Um, and, you know, he, him and my mom both, I mean, they, they shaped us kind of towards that goal. Uh, and then, lo and behold, I became an engineer. Uh, uh, went away so easy to be an engineer. Did you sail through school? Is that what you're saying? Uh, no. You, mean, you you got to work hard. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a tough degree, but, you know, you get through it. You enjoy it and everything. Um, went away to work for a while in the, in the, in the L.A. area. Um, original game plan was to get my doctorate and come back to UH and teach. Completely didn't happen. <laughs> Got my master's and said, I'm out, forget it. Uh, but then, you know, my wife and I, who we both grew up here, we decided to move back to raise our kids here and everything. So we've been back for 15 years, give or take. Ah. Uh, we first hosted this show, the International Micro Symposium, here in Honolulu for the first time it ever left the continental U.S. here in 2007. Ah. So uh, I was 10 years younger a little bit less wise and a little bit more open-minded about things. And so we had such a good time. We said, hey, why don't we do this again? So uh, we put in a bid in 2008. You're the show then. Uh, you know, Wayne Sherma deserves really the lion's share of the credit. I mean, he's the one that made the first move to bring it here in 2007. Um, the joke that we always have is Wayne was 30 in 1998 when we, uh, when we first bid it. When the show came, uh, he was 40. Uh, in 2007, I was 30, and so it was sort of my turn to kind of come help do things. So I served as the pitch man to convince the uh, deciding committee to bring it here. Um, Wayne really is the brains behind the operation, so he helps make everything happen. Uh, I am now in my 40s, so to speak. And so now, you know, it's our turn to kind of pass the baton to the next generation to find the next uh, young, unsuspecting person in their 30s to <laughs> go bring it back down, again. Yeah. And then every 10 years, it'd be beautiful to have this cycle repeat over and over and over again. Let's do a shout out to Wayne. You could use his last name, because I don't know his last name. Professor Wayne Chiroma. I mean, like- Oh, that he, Wayne! That one. Oh, wow, yeah, you know Wayne. Yeah, this, we've known each other a few this years. This is fabulous that you know Wayne. <laughs> Hi, Wayne. <laughs> okay, so what are you doing now? This very I mean, moment I'm talking job. to you. Thank you. Good, good. Very metaphysical answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I run, uh, I run my own business. It's called Terrasis Technologies. It's actually based, it, it was started on Maui, and we moved it here to Oahu in uh, 2009. Uh, it's, it is a wireless business, so it's related to this conference. Um, we do a lot of defense work, but we've actually been moving into a lot of the commercial space. So we combine wireless technology, software stuff. If you hear about all this cloud software, we do that. And so we're just trying to build as many things as we can to get them out there in the world. That's what we do for a living. That's great. But, but don't you, and this is digression from what we plan to talk about, but I need to ask you, don't you You're feel, going off script, man. So okay. it's all right. It's okay. Think tech, you know. <laughs> we, we follow our intuition and our curiosity. So, <clears throat> um, but if the world is going to public nodes, where everything is going to be free, I mean, maybe you know, just somebody has to hook it up there. But after that, it's going to be free. This sure. is what I think is going to happen. Uh, is it, are you still relevant then? I actually think more so. I mean, just because the infrastructure is free. So let's say the day comes where, you know, the the information highway is as ubiquitous as the physical roads that we all drive on, right? 
I, as a regular citizen, do I pay for that road? No and yes. I mean, I don't. I don't write a check, but my taxes pay for that,、mm. right? So why couldn't my taxes pay for that same information highway that's spewing these ones and zeros all over the place? But still, there are services that I need to buy my my soda from. I need to get my gas from. There's all these stops that can come all over the place on this information superhighway. So companies and vendors like mine, where the services and the capabilities and the products that ride on this information highway, we live in America. It's a it's a capitalistic society. We get to make profits off of out, adding value added services, even on this free backbone. So in a way, the more free they make it. The the faster they make you, they help you go. I think the more businesses can benefit from offering services on this super fast highway. You want to build that highway. I don't want to build a highway. I, it, there, there's a phrase in Silicon Valley that they said, "Don't ever be the gold digger. Be the one who sells the shovels and the pails to the gold digger." So you want to arm people who want to go do things, <laughs> as opposed to building out the railroads. <laughs> I'll leave that to better and more talented people than me. That's that's not going to fly. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so, now, how did you get from all of that to being the what co-chair of this whole big important conference? I mean, right now, this year. With all these eight thousand people plus their families coming around, you 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 stayed in with it, and you're part of it. Is that what it is? As long as it lasts, you'll be involved. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you give credit to the team. I mean, you, you look back in two thousand and eight, kind of after we finished.、Uh, it as as the saying goes, it takes a village, right? I mean, so it was it was. Uh, Wayne and me and a handful of volunteers that really said, "Okay, we want to do this again." It took the convention center's leadership to come in and, and help us、Debbie、craft、Zimmerman. the story. Debbie, the, De at, you know, at the time we had a we had、uh, some other folks running the center. We had the key anchor hotels in Waikiki that had to muster up. So, you know, it's sort of like a Waikiki wide pitch that we had to put in front of this decision making committee. And it literally feels like a lifetime ago. It was, it was you know, nine years, nine, ten years ago when we did that. Well, you were one of the、uh, early science conferences at the convention. That's center, right, weren't you? Yeah, we you were, were one of the first ones. There, effectively, we were we were trying to show this idea of this technical tourist that there's a demographic that could be valuable to the state that、uh, presumably has a higher income level because they have a higher education or whatever, whatever else you want to call it. And they bring their families along. So the net economic impact per family of these technical tourists is potentially greater than just you know randomly pulling whatever tourists we can bring into the state. Yeah. So、uh, trying to get over the,、uh, the the branding bias of well you, you can't possibly come to Hawaii and do real work because you're going to be sitting on the beach. We have to overcome a lot of those those biases and show well you can bring people here, have a great technical event. And then they go get to have fun after that. It's actually possible to do both. Tell me why this is a great technical event. Well, I mean, so you think about it this way: we are the way we see it is we are hosting eight thousand of our best friends from all over the world.、Uh, the IEEE Society is the world's largest electrical engineering society in the world by far. We have a few dozen subdisciplines. Our wireless stuff is one of those subdisciplines. So. This IMS is the flagship event for the whole year.、Uh, it goes somewhere in the country every year. It happens to be here in Hawaii this year. So this conference represents the best and brightest in research. So we have people that have to submit research papers. We only accept about forty percent. Really? So for every two that comes in, only one、you、actually gets on accepted. You sit on that committee. I don't. We have about eighty some odd people that actually review、oh, papers.、Wow. Tons and tons of papers. And so you have the best and the brightest in terms of new advanced research. We have about 450 exhibitors, literally from all over the world.、Uh, not only from the continent of the U.S., but from Asia, Korea, China. That's We, Lee Wood. He's, he's Lee, doing the exhibitions, all of that stuff. exhibits,、yeah. right?、Um, showcasing. A lot of times, they actually release products here at this show because this is the flagship show. So, if there's any show to launch your brand new product, this is the show to do it at. Uh, so, what kind of product were you, were you talking about? Is、uh, it a product for consumers or a product for the industry for researchers? What is it? I would say typically the the target audience are other industry members.、Uh, there are the the vast majority of our vendors are what we call component vendors. They they build the things that go into your smartphone. They don't build the smartphone.、Um, but we also have. One of our big pushes this year, in particular, is the 5G market. The 5G market is the next generation market for your or 
uh, for your cell phone to actually make you uh, help you download like a whole it's HD video to your phone in a few seconds. Is it, but but is it is it is it is it soup? Uh, it does it taste good? It sure no, does. No, no, no. Is it ready? Oh, well, not can yet. Can I go out and buy it? Why, why, why can I not yet buy it? Uh, there's a global release that's actually getting ready literally right now. And so there are some early releases. You'll see some commercials from Verizon and Sprint, I think, is pushing that. So they're getting ready, but prepare to see in the next three years, the whole world is really going to change. In, in my opinion, 5G is the tipping point where the speeds are so fast I don't know why you'll ever want to plug a wire into your wall ever again. <laughs> I mean, it, that's, is that much of a game changer? So that's here. Um, we actually have, I want to say, three, maybe four of our local companies here showing what, what, what we have to, to sell to the rest of the world. So, you know, everybody's bringing their wares out to, to show for the party. Well, when you say that, it makes me think that this conference, IMS 2017, actually accelerates the speed at which we are going to have 5G. Is this true? Yes. I mean, it, we, like I said, this, this is, it really does feel like, you know, your, your friends from all over the world are coming because uh, pe the, the people that are, that are pioneering things and are pushing the envelope, they're all here. Sometimes this is actually the only time throughout the whole year that you get to see some of your colleagues. Everybody's busy. Everybody's well, running around trying to make email things happen. And all that, yeah. yeah, so this is like face-to-face -face time, yeah. right? Quality interactions, quality exchanges. It, it only happens at symposiums like this. What about trade secrets? Can you, can you talk freely? Um, that's up to you. It's up to whatever your competitive strategy is. Some folks are very open, some folks are very not. Mm. I mean, literally, you walk on the show, sometimes they have these uh, uh, silence booths. Right, they, they, look, right? They, they look like these booths, there, there's, there's maybe one window, there's a door, one way in, one way out, for you this. to have these very private conversations <laughs> right in the middle of this floor where there's thousands of people but walking around. nobody can around. hear them. Yeah, so it, it all depends on the strategy of the, of the business. Oh, that's so interesting. So when you start a conversation with somebody, I mean, somebody you've dealt with, you can lay the foundation for that. You can say, how, how free can you be? Can we talk? Can we yeah. talk? Yeah. Come over to the side here <laughs> yeah, and then, really? like, step into my office. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, there's two very different ways to look at it. The research side is very, very open. On, on principle, the, the goal and, and the obligation of, of a researcher is to spread knowledge, right? You're, you're rewarded on publishing, presenting, and teaching others what you know. Very, very open, right? It's, as open it's as you can be. Correct. And somebody, somebody is giving you gratification, they're, they're giving you a, the nod, they're telling you you're doing a good job. Correct. Yeah. And, and you've come up with a great idea that we haven't thought of, good job. Yeah, yeah. And then you have the other folks that are, well, we, we want to grow our business, maybe a little bit, a little more close hold, you know, it just depends on what they want to achieve, yeah. right? Yeah. That would be interesting. <laughs> and deals, there'll be deals. There is a lot of deal making that goes What's on. What's a deal like? Can the, you give me an example of a deal? So, the, the, to buy a 10 by 10 foot booth costs after it's all said and done, runs you about four to $5,000, okay? So in order to make it a successful event for you as a vendor, including the, the time and cost to travel here, payroll and everything else, you want to be about 10x that. So you want to be able to walk away feeling like, I've got at least 50 grand of pretty darn inked deals by the time we pack up and we go home. Is that gross or net? That's gross. Okay. And, and, and many of the vendors actually far exceed that. I mean, it really depends on what your sales price is for your product. I mean, if you sell something that's, you know, 25 cents, that's a lot more hands you got to shake to get to that number. Yeah. But some of our vendors, we have vendors that sell very high-end test equipment, some vendors that sell very high-end software. Each one of those is tens of thousands of dollars. It only takes one or two sales for you to go, okay, I made my numbers, we're good. And you get brand awareness. You know, a lot of times you, you just need to remind customers, I'm here, where, what can we do for you and everything else. Just those soft touches sometimes pay off, maybe not today, but tomorrow they can pay yeah. off very well. Case study, okay? Uh, and whether we have a public conversation on the floor of the convention center or one in the little booth. Right. You and I, we get together and I've had an idea, we've exchanged email, you have something that I need, I have something that you need, so we make a little partnership, we make a deal. And it is a piece of technology that will fit in the next version, maybe, maybe the 5G version of my Samsung phone, which I love dearly, Samsung. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, great, great phone. Um, um, so where do we go from there? How do we make the big bucks? 
what do we do? Lift the phone up, this phone or any phone, and call Samsung. Excuse me, Samsung, we got some technology for you, and we like you know millions and billions for our technology because we know you can't get it anywhere else. So I mean, that would be awesome. I you know I. Uh... I still long for the day where I go into a business meeting for the first time and I walk away with a million dollar check. I'm still waiting for that to happen, and I that will happen before I retire. I want that to happen for you, Karen. <laughs> um, but you know, usually it's a process, right? But the beauty of a show like this is is actually the diversity of of attendees. You have some of the largest uh, manufacturers, like Lenovo is here, uh, Samsung is actually here, and you have some of the smallest vendors. And and you know, if you run the stereotype that most of the innovations come from the smalls and the bigs acquire those, this is the perfect place to make those deals happen. You wow. at least start it, right? It, it, you know, as the saying goes, you do business with those that you trust. And sometimes it takes that handshake, you gotta look them in the eye and just feel them out to go, do we, do we want to work together? Uh, it's unlikely to, you know, people are walking around with checkbooks and everything, but this is where the relationship starts. This is the Guan Chi thing yes. right here. And I agree, certainly you have to have that trust if you're going to make a long-term and heavy-duty deal yeah. with, with anybody in this incredible pipeline that, you, that you're involved in. Let's take a short break, okay? And we'll come back and we'll talk about the larger economic issues sure. around this kind of conference symposium. Uh, that's Kevin Miyashiro. He's the co-chair of IMS 2017. And he's telling us about how it's going to work. Next week, I'll be there. I'll see you there. We'll be right back. You can be the greatest, you can be the best You can be the king, come banging on your chest You can beat the world, you can beat the war You can talk to God, go banging on his door You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock You can move a mountain, you can break rocks You can be a master, don't wait for luck Dedicate yourself and you can find yourself Like bingo. Bingo, we're back. Kevin Miyashiro, he's a co-chair of IMS 2017, begins next week at the convention center. And what's extraordinary about this is, you know, there's a lot of scientific conferences coming down the pike. And uh, a month ago or so, uh, Debbie Zimmerman and the Elele meeting, um, you know, involved, oh, gee, hundreds of researchers from U UH and, and elsewhere and the hotels and everyone who is interested in and wants to, you know, encourage scientific conferences here. And there are plenty of them coming down the road, really. Yeah. Um, but what, what's amazing about this is that you guys were among the first to do it here. So you understand this whole economic connection to have scientific conferences here. Why do I like a scientific conference better than a conference of, say, I don't know, postmen? And by <laughs> the way, the postmen are also coming. Thousands and tens of thousands Just of them. Just don't make them mad, right? We don't want them to go and post on us, no. Uh, oh, oh, you so, heard it on Think yeah, Tech. It's edit, all edit, about edit, postal. Edit. Um, so, you know, you look at the numbers, right? We, uh, we, we have 8,000 attendees coming. Uh, that, those are the people that are registered to come to the event. Uh, what do you think the chances are that an attendee is going to get to come to this event and their family is going to say, have fun without us, yeah. we'll just stay home? Yeah. Right. Very low. So yeah. actually, we have a lot of families that tag along for the ride. So first of all, even though the event is only about a week long, they tend to stay beyond that, either before or after. So the average stay is closer to a week and a half. They might even hop to the neighbor islands, right? Yeah. Uh, you so, encourage them to do that. Well, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so let's say there's 10,000 total bodies converging on the state, right? Uh, in addition to that, um, most of them are going to be engineers, managers, supervisors, something like that. So running the, the, stere the stereotype, their income is, is higher than the average American household income, which means that the spend per family is higher. They buy the nicer rooms, they go to the nicer restaurants, they stay longer, they, can, they have more residual income. So from an economic stimulus perspective, it's a great way to go, right? We 
the, the, the forecast, the impact that we forecast for our event alone is about 35 to $40 million in a week and a half's worth of time. It's not a bad day's work, right? If you could have one of those a month, and you think about how much that could change the tax base for the state, what we could do to reinvest those taxes into uh, you know, redoing our sewer system, redoing the roads, you know, whatever it is, it's, it's a great way to go to couple the fact that we still have, to this day, one of the best brands on the planet uh, as the Aloha State, combining that with very high-spend families. I mean, it's a great win-win for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I absolutely agree. It's free money almost. <laughs> you know, in the sense that we wouldn't have it otherwise. We wouldn't yeah. have any of it otherwise. Right. So the idea is you'd much rather have it than not have it. Yeah. And it's good for the university. There's a connection there in yep. the research side. Yep. College of Engineering, for example, will probably right. be down there in force. I know it will. Wayne, we're not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, but the, you know, the thing that strikes me is, um, is, that, is that this is so good that somebody, maybe you or your cohorts, are going to figure out you can do this in Asia too. So, I mean, actually, the reverse is actually already true. There are, so I refer to IMS as the flagship conference. It really is the big show for the year for this society. But we also have a lot of smaller conferences in, in some of the emerging areas. Mm. Asia is one of the biggest <clears throat> emerging areas. When we track our demographics, our, our membership demographics year to year, the biggest percentage growth for the last, I want to say, eight years and counting is always Asia. It's one or more of the countries in Asia. And so we have smaller but if emerging conferences that go through uh, China, India, Japan, Korea, and it just keep rotating. Uh, do we want to pull those here, maybe? Or do we want to actually send more things there? We don't really know yet, but we know that Asia as, as a hub is growing really fast. And, and Hawaii has always been touted as we are that great bridge between the continent of the U.S. and most parts of Asia. Yeah, we want and to so be that. so we can be central to that conversation. Yeah, and we could be the hub. I mean, in, in a sense, in the scientific sense. You know, it strikes me, there's, there's not too many places in the country, you know more, but um, where you can say that there's a, it's a hub of um, scientific conferences. And to, if we could achieve some notoriety in that department, uh, it would really change the way the world looks at us. First yeah. of all, we wouldn't be, you know, grass skirts and hula, <laughs> which is very nice, but this is better. Um, and it would be something that brings people in, not only from the U.S. mainland, you know, the regular market for Waikiki, but the whole world. Right. And the more conferences, and each conference like feeds the other conferences, they're all, uh, they all, some of the parts is greater somehow. Yeah, um, absolutely. And so you're in a movement. This is a movement. Uh, in a lot of ways, it feels like it. I mean, I, I don't know the specifics, but it, I have a sense that as the years go by, we are having more of these technical type conferences coming here to Hawaii. So it feels like something is changing. We're, we're being able to shed that, that uh, uh, perception that you can't work hard and play hard here yeah. when you come to an event like this. Yeah, that's what, that's what Debbie Zimmerman is doing with the Lele thing. And, and it's, uh, you know, it's impressive because there are so many conferences and maybe they, you know, if, if one scientific organization sees another scientific organization yeah. out here, they say, well, I yeah. guess it works for them. It must right. work for us too. Right. So you have a snowball kind of effect. And, and our event, I think, is particularly notable because we're a two-timer. It's one thing to say you did it once, if you never do it again, the question is, why? Right. You know, maybe it wasn't such a good a success or something. Out right, the fact right. that we can do it two times in a row, I would hope that that would give a lot of confidence and, um, you know, motivation to others to say, wow, they really did do it twice. Uh, Hawaii has the capacity to support an event of that magnitude. We can do it too. Yeah. Right. That would be an awesome message to send out to people. So I can see the convention center, which is sort of, you know, it's just one um, you know, structure in this schematic somehow. Um, the convention center wants this, obviously, right? Because they want, they need business. They want business, and, right. and that's a that's a given. And Waikiki, they want it. Um, the hotels want it. The restaurants want it. Um, but you know, in many ways, that that money, that gross, that net that results from scientific conferences like IMS, you know, goes to those guys. It doesn't go to. Why do I care about IMS? So. I don't know that I could make um, a, a direct, clear correlation you start to... start by saying I'll get a better phone out of it. Yeah. <laughs> clear. Did I mention we're giving away free iPhones? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, you know, I, I don't know that we can make a clear economic correlation to every, you know, everybody that lives here. Um, you know, as somebody that's, you know, grown up here, my, my kids were both born here, 
uh, my, my wife grew up here too, that, that uh, I actually feel like a big part of it is this is our opportunity to show the world what the Aloha Spirit really means. I am amazed to this day in the modern 21st century that some people still go, do you guys have electricity in Hawaii? Are you kidding me? <laughs> right, I mean, so, you know, to show, okay, you know, we're, we are, we're a bona fide big city. We have all the things that you can expect, but y you can read about the word Aloha in Wikipedia. You can't quite get it. You need to feel that. And so I, I actually feel a certain amount of pride in, in being able to host all of these people here. And it's something that you have to feel. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's a great way to extend that, that, that uh, Aloha spirit to all these people that for many of them, this is actually the first and potentially the only time they're going to come to Hawaii in their lifetime. And the fact that we get to be the reason why they come here, I think that's awesome. Yeah, and, but, but they're also emissaries. That's right. You know, they, 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 Everybody you run into in the mainland, you tell them, I'm from Hawaii. Everybody has the Hawaii story. They know somebody, they, they came to Hawaii, and, and it's always with a smile, right? Yeah. So now we have 10,000 salespeople going back to wherever they <laughs> right, are right, right. to tell somebody else to come back here. Right. Well, the other thing is, uh, as I mentioned before, the university, because I think the university benefits by this a lot. Uh, even if it's not a, you know, it, I mean, this is obviously associated with the university, but there are other conferences that are not necessarily. And the, the point is the university can get grants out of this. Their research money can come in here. People can see. Once we identify as a, a franchise in science and technology uh, and bring these conferences in, then we can bring grant money in, too, and bring researchers from far away who don't mind spending time here. You know, right. if they believe they're in a, in a place where there is excellence. Right. They need to have intellectual excellence. And so, I mean, any contact we have with any scientific organization helps build our reputation and our potential in that regard. I mean, you know, there's, there's interesting serendipities that can occur. And a lot of times you just, you just can't predict when they're going to happen. Uh, an interesting example of that, uh, you know, back in the 70s, a guy by the name of Professor, Professor Norm Abramson, hanging out in Stanford, said, hey, uh, I kind of like that Hawaii weather. And that surfing thing looks pretty cool, too. Packs up, moves out here. He and a bunch of colleagues at the Hence university. the internet. Right. I mean, <laughs> I mean, a lot of people don't know that that actually has a lot of its roots in Hawaii, right? Yeah. So, so having those kinds of events occur, start from the research end, they start from these serendipitous meetings that happens here. It's really hard to know and predict exactly how these things can show up, but you have to have enough swings at bat to have that serendipity show up. So the more times you have these events here, the more likely you are to have something great and profound happen a few years out from that. Yeah. And of course, the people in the street do benefit. I do benefit because there's more money, you know, flowing through our economy. Right. And it filters out and down and all over the place. And it, you know, as you said, it, you, you can collect greater taxes, so I have to pay fewer taxes in order to get that same infrastructure built. <laughs> I'm happy about that. But let's talk about you again. Sure. Let's talk about how your week is going to be. I like to know what happens when you wake up in the morning, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and you have to make sure this thing holds together. What's it like for you? You know. It's, it's an interesting thing. Uh, I, I liken it to getting married. So, so, <laughs> really? <laughs> so wow. you, you have all this prep getting ready for your wedding, right? You're stressed out. The, the car has got to be right. The food has got to be right. Everything's got to be right. And then the actual day comes, and then you just let go. You, you're there with your friends, and, and then it just sort of happens. And the, interesting, the most interesting thing about being an event planner is you see all the things going wrong. You know what's supposed to happen. But the key to success, as long as your, your guests never know that it was a miss, you're good, right? So it's, it's very easy to get stressed out about this. I mean, you basically have 8,000 moving pieces and then some. Signs could go wrong. We could run out of food. The lights could go off. Who knows? But we have a committee. Our, our steering committee is about 200 volunteers deep. We have paid staff of about 20 to 25 people. We have all the p people at the convention center. So you've got an army of people ready to deploy at a moment's notice to any one of things. So at, by basically today, let it happen. I mean, it's so yes, we could lose sleep. There's kind of no point to losing sleep. What's going to happen is what's going to happen. And as long as we see enough smiles on the floor at the end of the week, we're good. Uh, let it happen. <laughs> Kevin Miyashiro, letting it happen tomorrow and through the week for 10 days. Yep. It's going to be great, Kevin. Wish you well. Thanks for having us, Jay. Appreciate it. I'll see it. you on the floor. I'll be yep. there. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs>